subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello and you welcome to SHS Hour here on your Joy Learning channel with me, Dennis Amuba. We are in SHS 2 and we are here to learn English. The topic that we are learning today is the sentence under the aspect of English called grammar. We are looking at the sentence. So quickly, by the end of this lesson, I expect you to identify the subject and predicate of a sentence. I know you are able to identify what a sentence is, but we are going to identify the subject in a sentence and the predicate in the sentence. Our second objective is that we should be able to form four simple sentences and indicate the subject and predicate. The next thing, which is the third objective or what I'd like us to get by the end of this lesson is that we should be able to analyze simple sentences into their constituent elements. You do some analysis today. So without further ado, let's move on with our discussion today. I know that all of us can identify verbs. In SHS2, you know what verbs are. When we were in basic four, basic five, six, GHS one, two, three, we learned verbs and we always identify verbs in sentences. So I have some sentences here and I'd like you to identify the verb in each of the sentences below. Do that quickly for me. I know you, you have all that it takes to do that. There are one, two, three, four, five, six sentences and you'll be able to find all the verbs for me. Yes, I am sure you are done. Good, let's go and cross check. So these were the ones you are to identify for me as a verbs in each of, of, of the sentences. So we have, I'm reading in the first sentence. It's a group, I'm, the verb to be, which you usually call the helping verb or the auxiliary verb. At the SHS level two, we have a name for it, which is the operator. It is that which carries the tense. It is that which shows whether the first sentence is present or past. And am um, is present, so the first sentence is present. And we also learned that present form or past form of the verb is that which shows that that group is what? Finite. We learned that the last time. So the verb in that group is I'm um, reading. Good. The next one, knows. Yes, those in red are the verbs. Knows. We also have bought. The next one, have done. The auxiliary verb, have, or the operator, or what you call the helping verb. The main verb is done. So the two come together to form the verb phrase. That is the verb group. Great. The next one will be. Okay, will and be coming together form the verb group. Good. Then we have is is a verb. Yes. The past form was. So that is also a verb. I, I knew you would be able to find all of them because you've been doing verbs. Great. What are we going to use these ones for? These verbs will help us to divide these sentences into two parts. Verbs are critical in this particular lesson. Our ability to identify the verbs 
will help us to accomplish this task we are here to handle. We're going to deal with them because we know what verbs are. And I know you know what verbs are, so you are not going to worry uh, with this lesson at all. You, you're going to treat it like a piece of cake. I know. So let's go to the next one. When you look at a sentence and you're able to identify the verb, from the verb, in the first sentence we have am, reading to the end, has a name. Okay? And that name is predicate. So as soon as I find my verb, that which is on the left and agrees with the verb is what we call the subject. So always to be able to find the parts of the sentence, please identify your verb. Find the verb. If it has an auxiliary, look for the main. If it's only one, then it's from there to the full stop. That becomes your predicate. And on the left side, which is normally occupied by nouns or what we call nominals, and their equivalent, such as pronouns, will be the subject. So in our first Example, you have, I am reading an interesting storybook. I'm reading an interesting storybook is what we call the predicate. And I becomes the subject. The next one was the predicate, knows me very well. And what becomes our subject? Kofi. So, Kofi knows me very well. Kofi is a subject, knows me very well. Is a predicate. The predicate is headed by the verb. Good. The next one, the man bought a dress for his daughter. Bought a dress for his daughter is a predicate because that is where the verb starts. The predicate structure is headed by the verb. The next one, you have done your assignment. Have done your assignment is the predicate. And what's our subject? You. I will be there. What's the subject? I. The predicate will be there. Easy. Easy. The last one, Accra is the capital of Ghana. Is the capital of Ghana is the predicate because it is headed by the verb is. So sentences, these are simple sentences or what we call declaratives. They can be put into two parts and that is what our concern is today. What concerns us today in this lesson is to be able to find the two main parts of a sentence. And we are saying that the two main parts of a sentence are the subject and the predicate. But to be able to find these parts, always identify your verb. Once you have found the verb, you are ready to go. From the verb to the end is a predicate. And what is on the left, which agrees with the verb, is a subject. And as I've said, that position is normally occupied by nouns, which are also called nominals. And they are equivalents, such as pronouns. Good. Let's move on. So... This is what I meant. The sentence would be equal to subject plus predicate. So what we had at the beginning, I, subject, predicate, I'm reading an interesting story. The next one, Kofi. 
subject. Knows is the verb and it's the head of the other group. Knows me very well. The next one, the man. And the verb, bought a dress for his daughter. Bought a dress for his daughter is a predicate. The man is the subject. You have done your assignment. Have done your assignment is a predicate. And the subject is you. The next one, I will be there. Will be there is the predicate. I, the subject. And as I said, the subject must always agree with the predicate or the verb that heads the predicate. That's why in English, if you remember, we learned subject verb agreement. So we do not just say that once I find my verb, then what is on the left side is just the subject. The subject has a relationship with the verb which is the head of the predicate. And many times they will agree in number. Okay, so I will be there. The other one is you have done your assignment. You can't say you has done. So you has a relationship with have. But have is the head of the predicate structure. And Accra is singular. So Accra is the capital of Ghana. Is agrees with Accra. But if we had used Accra and Kumase, then probably we would have said Accra and Kumase are two sitters in Ghana. Okay, so always the subject has a relationship with the head of the predicate. But don't forget that to identify the predicate, you only have to find a verb. And from the verb to the end becomes your predicate. And what is left on the left side, which is normally a noun or a nominal, becomes your subject. Good. Now, I'd like you to form four sentences on your own and identify the subject and the predicate in each sentence. That is your work for now. I'm waiting four sentences and identify the subject and the predicate. Yes, I know you are done by now for sentences. I'm going to write mine and I hope they will be in line with the sentences that you wrote. So I write mine here and then we will see. So So I have written my sentences. My first sentence, my second, my third, and my fourth. First one is Kofi has arrived. Kofi has arrived. Where is our predicate? Where is the verb? We have has arrived. So that is our predicate.
Once we find our predicate, where is our subject? Kofi, good. So, you see that it's as easy as any other thing. Number two. The books are mine. Where is our verb? Ah. So, from ah to mine is the predicate. Good. And where is our subject? The books. Great. Our third sentence, Joe knows you. Where is our verb? Knows. So from knows to the end becomes our predicate. And then where is our subject? Joe. And as I said, the subject always has a relationship with the head of the predicate. The verb is knows because Joe is singular, third person. That is why I say Joe knows you. Don't forget that. Our last sentence will see you soon. So will see forms a group for the verb. And therefore from will see you soon is a predicate. Good. As I said, when we look at our fourth sentence, the verb in there is will see. Verb group. Okay? Or the verbal group. And you have you soon. From will see to you soon forms the predicate. Because we have the verb there. So let's write. Okay. So we'll see you soon is a predicate and I is the subject. Let's move on. Now we know how to identify the two main parts of a sentence. Okay? And we have said that to be able to identify these two main parts, which are the subject and the predicate, we must also identify the verb. And I know we all know verbs, as we did from the beginning. So to be able to say that this is the subject, you must know your verb. And from the verb to the end of the sentence is your predicate. And that which is left on the left side is your subject. And I've also indicated that the subject always has a relationship with the verb. The verb can be in a group where you have what you call the auxiliary verb or the helping verb. There's another name for it, which is the operator. When you have a main verb and an, aux an auxiliary verb, the auxiliary verb is called the operator. It is that which carries a tense. And it is that which you also agree with the subject in terms of number. Okay? So, whenever you want to identify the predicate, you would have to find the verb from there to the end. And what's on the left is the subject. Because in English, you know, we have subject-verb agreement. So, as soon as I find my verb, predicate, on the left side, subject. We move on to other things concerning the sentence because we are looking at the sentence. The sentence could also be analyzed again. And here we'll be looking at elements of the sentence. The sentence could also be referred to as a clause because the sentence has a subject and a predicate, as we said from clauses the last time we met. Now, the clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a predicate. We said that for a finite clause. Okay, so here a sentence could also be called a clause. The sentences that we are looking at here are simple sentences and they are all clauses. But we want to look at elements, the element of the sentence. You see, as we have the sentence, Komla taught me, 
if I asked you to find the subject and predicate, I'm sure you'd be able to do that. Good. Because you will know that taught me is a predicate because taught is the verb and me coming together with taught because a predicate and our subject is comma. Okay. And then the next sentence, they are singing their school anthem. Where's the predicate? Are singing their school anthem. Therefore, the subject is they. She is my lecturer. Where's the predicate? Is my lecturer. Therefore, she is a subject. They sat under the tree. Where's the predicate? Sat under the tree. And the subject? Oh, the day didn't come. So we have to correct that. It's they sat under the tree. Okay. The next sentence is, he had a class in the morning. Where's the predicate? Had a class in the morning. And the subject? He. Now, let's look at this. We can see that this sentence can be put into parts. Komla as one part, taught as one part, and me as one part. We can also have they, then we have our singing, then we have their school anthem. We can also have she is plus my lecturer. Then we have the they didn't come. I said that part is they. It's not there. They sat under the tree. Then we have he had a class in the morning. So when you have all of these, we want to know what names are given to all of these parts that come together to form a sentence. So for instance, we have Komla taught me uh, in three parts. Now I want us to look at these parts very well. You will notice that the verb is taught, that is verb. Then Komla, as we have learnt already, is the subject. Then what will be me? We want to learn. Even though it's a part of the predicate, it also has a name. We have found subject, we have found a verb. I'm sure that when you were JHS, you were taught some things in this regard. You heard something they called an object. But we will get there. So we are identifying what we know already. We go to the next sentence. We have our singing, that is our verb, verbal group or verb group. And then we have they as our subject. So what is the rest? The school anthem. What would we call that? She, and we have is as our verb. It's critical that we always find our verb. And then we have she as our subject. Always don't forget that. What will be my lecture? Then the next one, I said this one is they, so let me correct it. It's they. And then we have sat as our verb. The subject is they, we know. Once we find our verb, the subject is. It's easy to identify. Then what will be under the tree? Our next sentence is had as our verb. Then he becomes our subject easily. That is not difficult to find. What will be a class and then in the morning? These are other parts of the sentence. We know our verb. We know our subject. But 
What comes after the verb? Let's move on. So, as I said, you have Komla, Komla taught me. Komla taught me. We know our verb and we know Komla as our subject. What is me? Here there are other parts that we should name. And this is what I want us to look at. The S here is for the subject. V is for the verb, and O is object, and C is complement, and A is adjunct. So when we have found our verb, and also been able to identify our subject as that element on the left side, then what comes after the verb will also have to be identified. But how do I know that the element which comes after the verb is either an object, a complement, or an adjunct. How do I know that? How do I know? So we are going to look at how to identify an element as an object. So we go back. Komla taught me. Me is a pronoun. We have learned pronouns. And this comes after the verb. When we learn pronouns, we were taught that we have subject pronouns and object pronouns. I, subject, I do my work. I, subject, do is a verb, my work. I know him. I, subject, because no is the verb. If it turns around that he knows me, the I has now gone after the verb, knows. And therefore the I becomes the object. So here, for you to test whether me is an object, we have to use it in what we learnt when we are in JHS3 voice. If you want to test whether something is an object, try and form a passive voice with it so that that becomes a subject. But as it becomes a subject, you have to change it in the case of a pronoun to it subject pronoun. So if I'm starting the sentence from me, because it's becoming a subject, I have to say let me pick my pen. I have to say I. Okay. Komla taught me. So I taught is in the past. So I have to find the appropriate form of the verb to be. You know the verb to be? Yes. Am, is, was, are, and were. So when I look at taught is in the past. Therefore, the appropriate form of the verb to be should be a form that is in the past and it's also singular. And we'll also agree with I. What is that? Was. So you have I, was. Then you use the past participle form of taught, which is still taught because the verb is teach, taught, taught. So, I was, then I write the past participle form, taught, then I bring the agent, which is by. Komla. So, once I'm able to turn it this way, for me to become I in a passive voice or a passive voice structure, then me here is an object.
Let me correct these ones. Me here is an object. It's an object because it can be used as the subject of a passive voice. So whenever I find my verb and identify my subject, the elements that follow, I should try and see if it's a noun. Can I use it to form a passive voice? If it can become the subject of, of a passive voice, then it is an object. So when we go back, we will see, for instance, Komla taught me, then me is object. Let's look at the second sentence. They are singing their school anthem. I'd like you to start the sentence from the school anthem. You got it right. The school anthem is. Why is? Because the active sentence is in the present. Ah, is present. So, I have to get the verb to be which is present and is singular. Why? Because the school anthem is singular. So, the school anthem, singular, is. And then you see the verb there is in the ing form. So, I have to go and use the verb to be, which has the ing form, which is the being, the present participle. So, it becomes the school anthem is being sung. That's when you use the past participle form of sing by them. So let's try that and see. So we have this. The school anthem is being sung by them. Because I can use the school anthem as the subject of the passive voice, then it means that the school anthem is an object. Right. Let's go to the next one. She is my lecturer. My lecturer. Can we do same what we did? In the first one, my lecturer. How do we form a passive voice with that? My lecturer, I don't know what the past part will, will be for us. So here is a completely different uh, uh, scenario. It has a different name, that element. Here you notice that she can be equated to my lecturer. Look at the verb there, is. And when we were in basic school, JHS, we were taught linking verbs. This is one of them. Is, was, are, were, become. You notice that you can put is equal to there. Some people call them equity verbs. So you can say she is equal to my lecturer. When you can do that, then you are going to what we call complement. A complement refers back to the now. But it defines so you have, she is my lecturer. That is the image that she has, or the position that she has. So this is complement. It is the same person, but more or less the new image, the 
position and you can equate it. We go to the next one. They sat under the tree. Under the tree. Can we say under the tree was sat by them? Then it means that is not an object. Can we also say that they is equal to under the tree? No. So that also has a different name. And thus you were taught when you were doing phrases in SHS 1. It's a prepositional phrase. Under the tree. It is headed by a preposition. Under. So sometimes in such situations for us to know these, you would have to ask yourself a question that will elicit another chi as an answer. What question would you ask? Where did they sit? So once you ask this where question, it gives you a sense of place. And that is what we used to say were adverbs because it showed place. But here the name for this which shows place is adjunct. Adjunct. Adjuncts are a group that are either adverb groups or prepositional groups that will show you place, time, or manner. Okay, so these are called adjuncts. So I saw her at the station. At the station underline, at a preposition, the determiner station now. That's a prepositional phrase. You learn that in SHS2. That is an adjunct. We met in the morning. It talks about time. In preposition, the Determiner morning now, put them together, a prepositional phrase, and it shows you time. So many times people ask the question, when did you meet him in the morning? I saw them at the station. At the station, where did you see them? At the station. That shows place. He spoke to me in a nice way. In a nice way underlined you ask the question how and that is also an adjunct the manner what we learned in jhs you don't leave them you still bring them with you when you are in shs and they help you to get a better understanding of the language so we move on to the next one we had a class even though had here cannot be passivized as a class was had by us. It's quite awkward. Uh, verbs of sort of ownership or relation will also be object. A class. And then in the morning, time. What is that? Adjunct. So you notice that when we have a sentence, we can actually divide them and no other parts. Apart from what we learned earlier, that a sentence could be divided into two main parts, which were the subject and the predicate, where the predicate is headed by the verb to the end and then the subject will be on the left. But we go further to want to analyze what are the other things in the predicate structure because when we find our predicate we see our verb we see our subject but what are the other things that are a part of the predicate and that is what we are doing find your verb find your subject any other element try if you can write a passive structure if you can then that is the object if you 
cannot see whether it has a relationship with the subject. There are other times that it will have a relationship with the object. If there is a structure which is a prepositional phrase or an adverb group, and it will answer questions like when, where, why, and when, then you are talking about adjuncts. Let's look at these examples. We have these examples. They came last year. Let's find the elements. I know you can do this. Yes, because you know your verbs. First one, the verb is came. Good. Therefore, what's our subject? They. Great. The next group, last year, what would that be? What question would you ask so that that becomes the answer? When? When did they come? And so that is an adjunct. The second sentence, where's our verb? Great. Has eaten. You have two of them there the operator and the main verb, or what you call auxiliary verb and the main verb, as the verb group. So that's our verb. And where's our subject? She. Or the food. What would that be? Good. That is the object. Why? Because we can passivize it. We can use it in a passive voice. Let's do that. All the food uh -huh, has been. Then we bring been there because has agrees with B-E-E-N. All the food has been eaten by her. The she now becomes here because it comes after the preposition by. So this is object. I say it again, it is object because it can become the subject of a passivized structure. Let's go to the next one. We'll see as our verb, I becomes our subject Next week, what question? Time. So that is an adjunct. Good. So we have done well enough in this regard. You have to do something for me. So these... Uh, some sentences I have here for you. Your job is to analyze them into their constituent parts. Then I will know that you have really understood what we are trying to do here. So do this quickly for me.
Yes, I know you are done. And you got these answers for me. Where is our verb? Where is our verb? That is what we must always find. Our verb, ah, good. Then our subject will be all the players on the field. What would that be? What question? It's a prepositional phrase. Don't forget that. So it belongs to a certain group. Adjunct, that's our A. Because you ask the question... You ask the question, where? Okay? Where are the players? So that's an adjunct. Our next sentence, where's the verb? Was, therefore, our subject is Joe Tetekofi. Then, a great commentator. What would that be? You notice that, can we pacifize it? No. So you see, a great commentator refers back to Joe Tetekofi. And we can put equal to sign there. So you can say Joe Tetekofi is equal to a great commentator. Therefore, that is a compliment. See. Let's go to our next. What's our verb? Are celebrating good? Are celebrating. What's our subject then once we have found our verb? They. And then homo. What would that be? Can we use it to form a sentence? It is a noun, right? Can we form a sentence? Okay, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Do it for me. Let's do it together. Homo. Well, okay, it's singular. The tense of this structure is present. Singular, present, so we use is. Okay, and then the verb has ing, so we go for the B and the ing form. Being. Then we take the past participle of celebrate, which becomes celebrated. Being celebrated, then we bring our agent. The they now changes to them. So we have homo is being celebrated by them. Once we can use homo here to be the subject of our passive by structure, then homo is the object. Great. You can try a lot of them. Objects are not difficult to find at all. Our next example. What's the verb? Loves. Great. Therefore our subject is? Is. Mangoes. He loves mangoes. Mangoes are nouns. Can we pacifize them? Mangoes. Plural. So we go for are because the, the verb in the sentence here is in the present. So mangoes are, we use a past participle form of loves, which is loved. So mangoes are loved. We can have that. We bring our agent by, and the he now becomes him because coming after a preposition, and that should be an object pronoun. So, mangoes are loved by him. Then we will say, Mangoes are here, uh, mangoes here are object. We label it as object. Our next one has read. It's our verb, therefore our subject is a queer. All 
all the books. Now, can we pacify it? Right, you did it. All the books, plural, so we will not use has, it becomes what? Have. All the books have, because books, plural, and this is in the present, so we use have. Then, we will introduce the verb to be, to agree with have, which is been, then we will maintain our red. Interestingly, it's the same spelling, but we pronounce it as red. All, all the books have been read, then the agent, which is uh, by Ekua. Okay, so all the books have been read. We can use it to form a passive structure. Therefore, all the books is object. I hope you have really got what I am leading you to, to learn because we are doing it together. And I know you are following keenly. These are interesting things to do. To be able to find the parts, the constituent parts of a sentence, please find your verb. As soon as you have found your verb, find your subject there. It's not ready. It's automatic. As soon as the verb is found, the subject is automatic. Then you look at the other elements. If it is a noun, find out whether it refers back to the subject or the verb there can be replaced with an equal to sign. Then that noun becomes a complement. So John is a lawyer. A lawyer, a noun phrase. Therefore, can it be said that it refers back to John? Yes. You can put is equal to that is equal to sign there. Is equal to sign. You can equate it. So it becomes John is equal to a lawyer. That's the new image he has. That is a compliment. There are times that you can have a sentence like they made coffee the king. They made coffee the king. What is our verb? Made kofi is the subject. Uh, no, no. Let me correct this. They made kofi the kin. Made is the verb. They is the subject. Kofi becomes the object. But we have the kin. And the kin now is the new image kofi has got. So the kin refers to kofi. In that situation, kofi is the object and the kin is the complement of the object. Or they elected him class prefect. They elected him class prefect. Elected verb, they subject, him, object, class prefect, now refers back to him. Therefore, that is a complement of the object him. I hope you're following what I'm saying. So, complement can either be to the subject, as in Kofi is a footballer, where a footballer refers back to Kofi, or John became a great boxer. John became a great boxer. A great boxer underlined refers back to John became is there, you can equate it. Okay? And then you can have this, they nominated him chancellor. They nominated him chancellor. Where you have nominated as your verb, your subject is they. Him, the object, chancellor is a new image him has got. Therefore, chancellor is a complement of the object him. Let's go on. So these were what we found. These were the expected answers. You would see that all the players, subject, are the verb, on the field adjunct. Then we had Jotete Kofi as your subject, where's your verb, was, 
And then a great commentator refers back to Jyoti Sekofi, therefore that is your compliment. Then you have your verb, are celebrating, therefore my subject is they. And then what are they celebrating? Homo. And I can use it in a passive voice, so homo wo is, because the tense is present and it is singular, is being because of the celebrating with the ing, so you select the the verb to be, the ing form, which is be an ing, being, homo wo is being celebrated by, as soon as by comes, the they becomes them. Then the next one, he loves mangoes, where's my verb? loves. Therefore, my subject is he. And then mangoes, can they be pacifized? Yes. Mangoes are loved by him. Therefore, mangoes is also an object. You see, when we were young, we were told that the object was the sufferer of the action. It was more or less the, the action of the verb, you know, affects it. And to some extent, it was true that if you said he hit me. The verb which is hit affects me. So me becomes the object. And he is the performer of the action which is hit as a subject. That is what we were told. That the subject was the doer of the action and the object was the sufferer of the action. Okay. But it's not always true that the subject is the doer. And of course, when there's an action in a verb, then it can affect an object. For instance, if you say, Accra is the capital of Ghana. My verb is is. Accra doesn't do anything, but it is the subject. And the capital of Ghana refers back to Accra. Therefore, the capital of Ghana is the complement of the subject Accra. Okay, then we come to the next one. Ekuya has read all the books. Where's my verb? Has read. Therefore the subject is Ekua and all the books the object because I can advise it and say all the books plural has there so I use have have and I introduce the verb to be which is been B E E N then you use the past participle form of read which is read. That is why I have all the books have been read by Ekua. So now we move on to end this lesson, as it were, so that you get a sense of what we have done today. Today what we have said is that the sentence can be uh, divided into two parts. And these parts are the subject and the predicate. How do I find them? To find these parts, you must identify your verb. So we said that the verb can either be in a group. So when I have an auxiliary and a main verb, I start from the auxiliary, which is the operator. It is that which carries the tense, and it is that which agrees with the verb. The subject. It is that which agrees with the subject. So when I found that to the end, that becomes my predicate. And on the left is my subject. So in finding the two parts, always find your verb. So that you find your subject and your predicate. So we have this sentence. Most of the students have enjoyed the lesson. Which of course I know you have. So in this, have enjoyed the lesson is a predicate. And the subject, most of the students. From here, we went on to analyze the elements in the sentence, apart from just finding the two parts. And we have learned that in the sentence, once we have found our verb and we have seen our subject, there could be other things. And we said those things could be looked at as S for subject, V for verb, O for object, C for complement, and A for adjunct. We have said that it is not difficult to find the verb and the subject. And so, 
In this example, he came here. Where is my verb? Came. Therefore, my subject is easy. He. Here, what question would I ask? So that becomes my answer. Where? So that is adjunct place. We learn that in GHS. Then, we have I have seen him. Where is my verb? Have seen. Therefore, I is my subject and him can I Start the sentence from there in a passive voice. He has been seen by me. Therefore, it is an object as we said. Thank you very much. I hope you have learnt a great deal. I'll come your way again some other time. Till then, this has been SHSR on your Joy Learning channel with me, Dennis Amoba. See you some other time. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.